Dr. Priyanka and today we are going to discuss about what IVF is, what it means and who needs it. So to begin with, what IVF, uh, what do you understand by IVF or ICSI? Many times you would have heard these terms. So IVF means in vitro fertilization and ICSI stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So how that process goes about, I'll tell you that in detail. So when uh, you have been advised to go through IVF or ICSI, we usually ask the patients to come on the second or the third day of their menstrual period. So once you come in, a scan is done. So we do a transvaginal ultrasound, see how your egg counts are and then we advise certain hormonal tests. So we rule out that there should not be any cysts on the scan and if you are lining everything looks perfect, then we proceed with the blood test. And based on the blood test and based on what your weight is, and the other parameters we plan for the dosage of the injections. So these injections are started as I do from the second or the third day of the cycle and then it would go on for up to say 9 to 12 days on an average around 10 or 11 days based on how well you respond to the injections and to assess that we would be calling the patients every few days. So the first uh, scan after the IVF injection is done on the fourth or the fifth day of the cycle and then we may even advise a blood test. Based on that other injections are added and subsequently every two or three days um, another two or three scans are done and then the final injection is planned which is called the trigger injection. So what I told initially was the first stage of the IVF that is uh, assessing the patient and then starting the injections. Then comes the second stage that is of the egg pickup. So we give the final injection and then plan the egg pickup. So the final injection is called the trigger injection and after the trigger injection the egg pickup procedure is planned usually between 34 to 35 hours after that injection. And on the egg pickup day what would we expect? So you need to come on an empty stomach with your partner or your husband and then the egg pickup procedure is done under general anesthesia. In this what is done is we do, after giving you anesthesia, we put in the transvaginal probe with the needle and then take out all the eggs which have been grown during this time. We take it out and then put it in a dish. So the embryologist analyzes it and then on the same day after few hours of culturing these eggs, the husband's sperms are injected into each egg and this process is called ICSI which is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. That means in each egg cytoplasm or the inner part of the egg, the sperm is injected and then it is allowed to develop into an embryo. That would, uh, and uh, the check for whether the embryo has developed or not is done usually between 18 to 24 hours after the injection. And then the embryos would be average allowed to go for about three days. Some cases we allow it to go for five days and then these embryos can either be transferred fresh or they can be frozen and then transferred in the subsequent cycle. So that is the second stage. The third stage is the embryo transfer process wherein as I was telling we can either transfer in the same cycle or we may freeze the embryos and plan to do a frozen embryo transfer. And uh, in the embryo transfer cycle we usually give tablets for the lining of the uterus to grow. Once the lining has grown appropriately and the blood flow is good, then we plan to transfer the embryos and after the embryo transfer, it takes about 14 days when we can assess by a blood test called as beta LCG whether you have conceived or not. So this is how the IVF process goes about. And uh, to understand like whether you really need it or who would actually need this IVF process. So there are certain uh, indications uh, or certain individuals who are really, uh, who really require this IVF process, especially women who have had tried all other types of treatments, nothing has worked out for them, like say 3-4 IVI cycles have been tried but not, we have not been able to conceive. If the main partner has very low sperm counts or there are major abnormalities in sperm utility, then if there is severe endometriosis, if you are uh, more than 35 years of age or if your egg counts are on the lower side, then these are certain specific indications for doing an IVF. Thank you.